What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome to the Keep It Techie channel. And today we're tackling an exciting topic and that's setting up an SSH server on Ubuntu 24.04. And for those new to this, SSH or Secure Share is a protocol that allows you to securely access and manage machines over a network. And this is incredibly useful for managing servers remotely, even for daily tasks like updating a system. Perfect for beginners and a great refresher for veterans, this guide is going to help you get your SSH server up and running in no time. So let's get started. Now in this video, we'll focus on open SSH, like I stated in the intro, which is a free version of the SSH protocol suite of tools. And unlike outdated tools like Telnet, open SSH encrypts all communications to protect passwords and sensitive data from being exposed over the internet. And we'll go through the process of installing open SSH, which provides both the client and server side utilities. And we'll also touch on some key configurations that enhance the functionality of your SSH server. And by the end of this guide, you'll know how to install and configure OpenSSH and even how to customize the login experience for users connecting to your server. So go ahead and grab some coffee and let's jump right into the world of secure remote control. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ. Co. All right, so I'm connected to my Ubuntu 24.04 server edition, and this is the same server that we set up in my previous video. And my reason for bringing this up is because during the installation process, there is a spot for you to install OpenSSH server on the server. So if you did not do that, then these next steps is something you need to do. Otherwise you can skip it, but let's go down and log into the server. And let me show you guys the first thing to do as far as installing OpenSSH server. If it is not installed and you did not install it using the installer. So let's log in right fast. My account is Josh. So just log in using your account and boom. So we logged in. And the first thing you want to do whenever you're installing any piece of software, new piece of software on the system is to update the system. I try to drill that in everyone's head. When I'm showing them Linux, you want to make sure you update the system before you go ahead on and install anything. But the simple command is sudo apps update. And I'm gonna write them all together. So in tandem, sudo apps upgrade. And the first command will check the repositories to see if there are any updates for packages on the system. The second command will actually grab those new updates and install them on the system to update any packages that are needed to. So let's go on press enter. And what I put at the end of it is dash Y because it'll answer that question that'll pop up. Are you sure you wanna proceed with these updates that'll automatically answer that question for us and it'll go right into the updates of the packages. So let's go down, press enter, type in our pseudo password and press enter. And like I said, it will go through, check to see if there are any updates and then go through the process of updating them. So I'll wait for this to finish and come back. All right, cool. So that is updated and all I did was clear the screen. That way we can get out the screen and just show you guys the command to install open SSH. And all you had to do is type pseudo apps, which is our package manager install. And then the package name is open SSH dash server and this includes the client as well for the local machine so which you won't use it unless you're sshing into another server let's say on your network then you don't really need the client but it's there as part of the package so let's go down press enter and that'll go through and install it and like i said i went through the installer to set up the operating system itself and there is an option to install open ssh so mine will look different because it's already installed and if you already have it installed it'll show the exact same way but if you don't have open SSH, 
SSH server installed, it will go through the process of installing it, grabbing all the dependencies and getting the installation completed on your system. All right, so now that our open SSH server is up and running, you can check the status of the actual service just to verify that it's running using the system CTL command. I'll just type that out so you guys can see, but sudo system CTL status and then SSH dot service and press enter and as you can see this is the ssh service so openbsd secures shell server and it is active enabled and running and then also you can check to just verify that open ssh is listening on a specific port or on whatever port is set to which is the default port i just want to show you guys another command in case you need to troubleshoot it or see why you're not unable to connect to the server but you can type LSOF and then tech I and this will list out listening ports on that server. So let's go sudo yeah LS and then the dash I option. And as you can see right here at the top, it is listening for SSH connections on port 22. So just showing you guys that that way you can verify that it is listening and looking for connections to the server. All right, so now with the server install, let's proceed to the configuration port. And let me show you guys the directory. Let's actually clear the screen so you guys can see a little better. And then let's CD to our ET and then the SSH directory and press enter. And then let's LS this directory. We may not have the permissions. May have to run like sudo or something, but nah, it's owned by root. So anything, any changes that you make in this directory, you have to run sudo. And so what we're looking for is the sshd underscore, which is right here and it's right above the blue. So sshd underscore config. That's what we're looking for. That is our configuration for our server. And it's very crucial that we back up the original SSH configuration before making any changes. And this is just in case we make the mistake with our configuration. We can always revert back to the original and we'll be back at square one where we started. So let's do that now. All we have to do is type sudo cp for copy. And then our file is in this location. So I'm gonna put periods and then forward slash and then sshd. And then we want to put the copy in the same directory and we're going to use that same name. So sshd.com. But what I want to do is put on the end of it. So back in the day, I used to put BC for backup. You can put whatever you want, but I noticed in Ubuntu's documentation, they recommend like original. You can put that in there as the, the extension of the file. But I always used to put like BCK. You can put original following their documentation. I'll follow their documentation and go down and do it that way. So this will copy that file and create a new file with dot original on the end of it with all the configurations that are in there and that way like i said we can revert back let's run an ls again dash la and we should see that original file in there so like i said if we ever need to go back to this original configuration we have a copy of it so whenever because sometimes it's easier to just copy the original configuration over the current configuration if you made a change in there it could be some syntax error that's very hard to find and sometimes it's just easy to just revert back to the original all right so in order to show you guys this configure file a little bit better we're gonna go down in the ssh into the server for my client and this is a good way of verifying that your ssh server is up and running as well and so first what you want to do is find out what the ip address of that server is so ip a press center that'll give us what our ip address is right here 19168.10.12 so let me hop over to another terminal and then we can log into this server right fast all right so this is my client which is my main system that i use on a day-to-day -day basis and just to show you guys how to ssh into the server so we know what our ip address is all we have to do is type ssh and then our user account because it may be different now if it isn't different like i have a josh account on this server if the name is pretty much the same as far as the username that's on your system you don't have to type the username on that system it'll automatically assume that you're logging in using the same name that you're logged into the system and as you can see my account is josh on this system on my main system and then my account on the server is josh and let me show you i'm gonna show you guys an example of that right fast so let's go 192.168.10 and press enter and this is an issue because i had a server out here in the past with the same ip address you might run into this this is mainly an issue i see because I'm always logging into different servers and sometimes they have the same IP addresses as before and so whenever you log 
getting to the server for the first time and this is one good tip that's why i'm glad this popped up basically what happens is it adds a fingerprint to your system and so you have to go into your known host file on your client machine and remove that server because that fingerprint will prevent you because basically letting you know that you're logging into a different server from that had that same ip address but it knows based on that fingerprint that it's not the exact same server so it could be like a man in the middle attack that's the purpose of them putting this here so i'm gonna skip ahead so you guys ain't got to see that but I'll, I'll show you guys if you ask me in the comments if you want to see that removing the known host basically it's just a file on your local machine the only reason i don't want to show it to you because i got a lot of fingerprints in there and some of those servers are like legit servers that i use and i don't want to share with you guys so let me go on pause and come right back all right so i fixed this issue so we can go down and log in and then actually let's go I, I wanted to show you guys the user account not needed when you had the same user account up there as well so i want to make sure i don't forget that but let's go down and log into it see right here this is the first thing it'll do whenever you log into a ssh server for the first time it will add that fingerprint to your known host file on your system all you have to do is type yes and this will add that to our file on our system it's basically the client directory and so let's go down and press enter it'll ask you for your password for that account on the server so press enter and boom we are logged into our ubuntu server 24.04 and then let me go down and exit out right fast just to show you guys you don't have to type the name in there so let's back this off and let's go down and log in again using that ip address simply and it'll do the exact same thing logging in the exact same way as long as you have that account up there that's the same then you can do that you can just type in the ip address but if it's a different name on the server then you want to type that name in and then the password to that account all right so let's go on and get into our configuration file it's a lot within this configuration file i don't want you guys to get overwhelmed so i'm not i'm gonna keep it pretty simple but let's type sudo nano and then we want to go under that e directory directory and then ssh and then let me tab so i can make sure the file name so it's sshd underscore and press enter and you want to make sure you don't edit that original you want to keep that one static you want to keep that one the same you want to make changes to it that way you can revert back if you need to so let's go on and get in here right fast and just walk you guys through it and like i said the way the reason i did it this way just you know via ssh because you can see it a whole lot clearer here versus me being on a virtual machine where the text is kind of small now with everything i did over there i'm going to zoom in so you guys can see you know what i'm saying but it still looks clearer here that's why i want to show it to you this way now let's go through the configuration file i want to show you guys a couple things in here that are very important to look at so for one the ports so you can change the ports i'm not going to go into it because that'll be part of my security guide like securing ssh server but you can set ssh to use a different port from the default port port 22. you can listen on specific addresses all that good stuff you can add your host keys what else let's see what else i want to show you guys authentication so you can permit root login so and that's something like i said security based video that i'm gonna do a little bit later you can turn on public key authentication which i'll turn that on and show you guys how to do that and adding our authorized keys to the system let's see what else i want to show you guys ignore un user known host so it's, it's a couple options in here you just have to uncomment them out uh, a lot of them is not you can turn off password authentication but you don't want to do that unless you have like ssh keys on there that's like a security configuration as well Kerberos authentication, you can turn this on, local passwords, Kerberos. Let's see what else, what else we got in here. I use PAM, X11 forwarding, you can turn that on, turn that off if you want to. Let's see, what else, what else, what else? Permit user environment, TCP, keep alive. That just allows people to keep it alive for a certain amount. Now one thing, let me go down and show you guys this, it's simple. So we can go into our banner and let's go down and add a banner. That way people can log into it. And I have an example banner that I've been using for a number of years, like on my main servers or production servers, so to speak. So this will be something we can at least modify in here. Cause all I'm doing is kind of showing you guys this. I'm not making any changes. I'll do most of my changes within the security of SSH video that I'll do a little later, but let's put a file it should be a file on our system called issue.net and this is where you can add a banner to your login so like i said you have to comment it out and then add this file in there so etc 
issue net so i'm gonna make changes there in a second but i just want to show you guys they they do have like some examples down here you can override certain things all that good stuff so that's pretty much it in the configuration file i want to show you guys let's go on and kill this right fast and save our changes to that file and now let me nano or pseudo nano that issues dot uh net file and man i can't type today but and it's under our e directory issue let me tab it out so it'll see if it pull it up yeah dot net press enter boom so nothing is in there except ubuntu 24.04 but let's add something else in here right fast like for instance i would put like an alert in here and i actually found this online a long time ago and i just been using it i put on one of my other production servers so let's add this in here let me see i'm not sure if it's gonna push it down or not it should yeah there we go so this is the alert that'll pop up and then we got our ubuntu 24.04 right there basically what it says is you are entering into a secure area your ip login time has been noted and has been sent to the server administrator this service is restricted to authorized users only our activities on this system are logged unauthorized access will be fully investigated and reported to the appropriate law enforcement agencies so anyway yeah i just want to make a change to it so you guys can see something you know that we modified within our configuration file so let's go on and save that file and let me show you guys what to do once you make changes to the configuration let's go on and clear that way we can clear it up i can show you guys the full command so let's type sudo sshd and and then dash t dash f and this will test out our configuration file to see if there's any issues with it it could be syntax errors or anything like that so uh ssh uh and then ssh d underscore conf and press enter this will test it out as long as you don't see any you know errors pop up or anything like that that lets you know that our configuration is good to go so next thing you need to do in order for this to take effect is to restart our ssh d service so let's go down and go in here and let's type sudo system cell and then works and then service and I've, i keep forgetting there is no ssh d anymore it used to be a ssh d now it's all combined under ssh dot service so let's go down and press enter that'll restart the ssh server and that's good we did lose our connection but let's exit out of this server boom and now let's log right back into it so ssh 192.168.10.212 press enter and there we go we'll see that alert and we can type in our password pseudo password press enter boom and we're logged into it so that's one like simple change you can make it's got that alert up there for us which is super dope it's super cool to see something like that you know when you're logging into a ssa server and you can modify this however you want to you can get this just search online search for issues.net examples or something like that and you can find something like this out there already and i might have you know used that you might see the one i use because like i said i pulled this off of one of my other servers that i have here at the house that i was just playing around with ssh in the beginning learning how to do certain things and this was one of the things i found and i said hey let me make changes to my server <laughs> and i grabbed it and just dropped it in there but super cool all right so that wraps up on setting up your very own ssh server on ubuntu 24.04 server edition and i'm glad i went through and showed you guys how to at least change that login banner i know it's a lot more you could do but like i said i want to do a video showing you guys how to make some security tweaks to make your ssh server a little bit more secure i always kind of separate that stuff out like fail to ban and, and it's just makes it simpler for people to find the things specifically that they want to do on the server let's say they've never set up a ssa server well this video is a guide for that and let's say they need to secure that server i have a separate video with that as well you know walking guys through all those changes that you can make within the configuration file to make your ubuntu server a little bit more secure but thanks for sticking with me through this guide and if you found this tutorial helpful please hit that like subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on all the tech tips here on the keep it techie channel so stay tuned for more deep dives into security settings and other advanced configurations on ubuntu make sure you keep learning keep experimenting and as always keep it techie